my name is Apostolos Kritikos, and I'd like to thank a lot the uh, organizing committee of World Camp Athens for the invitation in the event of 2017. Actually, we sent what we were going to speak about, and they, they thought it was cool, and they invited us. But nevertheless, it's an invitation. Thank you very much for that. Uh, <coughs> so it's OK. I'll do it with the, the arrows if you OK. So um, I, myself, am a user of WordPress since 2007. And along with uh, my partner, Angelus Nadax, which is in the audience alongside with other members of our team, uh, we are using uh, WordPress and WooCommerce professionally since 2011. Uh, I mean, making money out of it. So we thought it was cool to share some experiences we had with you here in uh, this annual conference in Athens. And before I start, I'd like to, oh, thank you very much. Before I start, I'd like to uh, tell you something uh, I believe about the WordPress community. I think it's a great community. We should support it when, how, and as strong as we can. And in order to go along with what I'm saying, um, I believe that if WordPress and WooCommerce are the service and we can consider ourselves being the users of this service, either as developers or, or as users, today in this conference we uh, interact with this service throughout the WordCamp organizers and volunteers which are in this room. So uh, how, how do you say that we give them a big applaud for getting this thing together for us so that we can enjoy it? with little cost and super cool presentations. Let's, let's have it. So uh, let's, let's meet. Uh, which of you were here to the presentation of, uh, of Mr. Loki? OK. Uh, Mrs. Suti, the previous one, the previous presentation? OK. Which of you are developers? OK, which of you are non-technical people? Excellent. Which of you have used WooCommerce as users for their software, for example? OK, and which of you have used WooCommerce as developers? Excellent, so we have everything. OK, uh, my presentation is going to be uh, about ERPs, Greek ERPs specifically and how they are integrated with uh, WooCommerce. It's something that we tried to do in my company, Social Mind, the previous year. And we tried with two, although we had the chance to uh, uh, explore some more. I'll say some things about the other integrations, but we will focus in two for this presentation. So uh, today we're going to talk as I said, about WordPress and WooCommerce, about ERPs, APIs, and, wha and why they are good for our lives. And a bit about the powers that WooCommerce and WordPress gives us, give us to uh, superpower our stores and our e-commerce solutions. So uh, previous speakers as well uh, pinpointed why WordPress and WooCommerce are very cool tools to use uh, as developers to provide our customers with great solutions. Some of the uh, biggest uh, advantages are in this slide, in my opinion at least. They're open source, they have a great community to support them and use them. They have plenty of plugins, REST APIs, documentation. Uh, there is a particular one that I like. It's the future proof, the red in the in the last line. And I say future proof because uh, the future of WordPress and WooCommerce isn't actually something that we can predict that's going to be forever for five years, for three years, or uh, it's going to die tomorrow. Because it's mainly uh, up to the community that uh, makes it grow to decide to decide for how long it's going to be working out there. So uh, a little things about it. Which of you know what an ERP system is? OK. So we won't uh, stay along here. Uh, it's um, 
software systems that perform many business processes for uh, businesses, companies, small or large, uh, such as the ones in the list. For example, uh, product planning, purchase, storage management, sales orders, clients, and stuff like that. Uh, the, the real thing we should be talking about, though, is why would somebody who has uh, any shop would like to integrate their shop with a solution, with an ERP solution? So, uh, in this, in the following slides, we have uh, the four or five main reasons for that. One of them is that we need. Uh, one data storage to have all our information. So what's happening uh, in Greece these days is that usually uh, we have companies that are selling things in physical stores, and until today they uh, they didn't have uh, any shop. Some of them had the near piece solution, and some of them didn't have any shop or a near piece solution altogether. So. Um, the time came where the physical store, store owners wanted to use the online challenge to channels to sell more of their products, so they created these shops. And this last year, in 2017, we've seen many clients coming to us and say, okay, I do have an ERP now. Can I integrate it with my shop? Why do they want to do that? One to keep their storage in sync with what's happening uh, with their eShop. Uh, this means that when, some, when, something, when, when a product is being sold from the eShop, the storage uh, in the ERP should also sync and have the updated amount of products available for further sales in their storage, physical storage, of course. Uh, if they sell something from one of or more of their physical stores, uh, again, the eShop, their online store, uh, as we say, should also have the update amount of products still uh, can be sold. Uh, also, uh, in Greece, as many all, all of you know, the uh, bureaucracy is huge, and so there are strict, strict, uh, uh, laws and uh, procedures on how we charge and then we get receipts and invoices for what we sell. These things should also be in sync when they are sold physically or from an online store. And this particular thing is a huge pain because especially when, uh, when a, a store supports wholesale and retail sales, we have to do a special treatment for those invoices versus the receipts. And last but not least, the thing that pains the sellers the most is the overselling uh, danger. Do you know what overselling is for a customer? Which of you know it? Hans? Okay. So overselling is trying to sell something that doesn't exist in my storage, but my user online sees that, the, that, that it is available. Let me give you an example. Let's say that uh, my store has a physical store that sells things and an online in a shop. I have two products of a specific, I have two items of a specific product to my storage. At the same time, two people are coming to my store requesting this uh, product, and there is an online user that also is interested to buy this product. What's gonna happen is if my uh, e shop doesn't sync very frequently with my ERP, my online user might see the product still available. Uh, however, the two buyers in my storage might have already bought the two remaining products. So I'm selling a product to the online user, but it, it's not really there. It just, it's just that, the, uh, that my shop hasn't synced with my ERP system. So it's still available, although it's not.
Okay, uh, having established this uh, base of discussion for why an ERP is important for the ESOP owners, um, let's talk about two different integrations that we've had to do with, the, with, with two different Greek ERPs. Uh, I'm more interested in showing you the infrastructural problem, so I'm not going to say which ERPs are, but any one of you that wants more details, we can discuss it in person outside after the talk. After all, it's coffee time, I think. So uh, the own solution uh, didn't, ha didn't offer an API. So we have an ERP that doesn't offer an API. Uh, how many of you think it was super easy to integrate the solution with an ESOP, with WooCommerce? I suppose you don't raise hands because you think it wasn't easy. Yeah. So uh, in this specific solution, this specific ERP I mean, we had an infrastructure like this. So we, are, we have the ERP on our left and the WooCommerce uh, on our right. And what's happening is in order to sync the two databases together, we need to have a set of identical tables in the databases that are exchanging information between them and then the databases are reading from those intermediate tables. So what we should do, what we had to do was on the side of the ERP, a set of intermediate tables were created by the ERP company, of course, and they were cloning the information on the database in the side of the ERP. At the same time, we had to create a set of those tables on our side, the WooCommerce side, and of course there were, there were tables that were not, we couldn't use the WooCommerce tables because their structure uh, was different. And then, after we implemented that, what we have to do was to read from those intermediate tables and of course wait for the ERP to write inside them. Okay, let's think about some uh, pros of about this solution. Let's talk about some cons. Uh, first of all, we had we have waste of resources because we're duplicating and quadruplicating the infrastructure just to be able to sync two databases, which of course over an API wouldn't be that hard to do. And especially because WooCommerce has and WordPress have a REST API, that makes the specific tools a very good candidate for a developer to create a viable e-commerce solution that can be integrated, we, we saw it to a previous presentation, with anything that also has an API. We're going to discuss about that in a while. Uh, waste of resources, as I guess you understand, uh, leads to delays. If you, if you remember the uh, graph, the diagram, we have three times in order for the transaction to go from one way to another and then the same times for it to go back. We have uh, a long learning curve. As a developer, I would rather not understand the infrastructure of the thing I'm integrating because my main purpose is to use it as a, as a tool, as a third party component to create a, a, custom, a customized solution for my, a tailor-made solution for my client. But since I have to duplicate part of the infrastructure just to be able to communicate with that, we had to go deep in the solution of the, of the ERP provider and understand why it's built the way it's built and how we're going to minimize our effort in order to make something that can bridge into solutions. Uh, last but not least, uh, cron jobs become sync scenarios. And wha what we mean with that is that uh, 
since we're talking about an ESOP database, we have lots of information that need to be synced. If, if we go back a couple of slides, we're going to remember that what we need to sync are orders, new customers that are coming from this shop that should be also replicated to our ERP solution, uh, products, uh, stock amounts, and stuff like that. We can't, with this infrastructure at least, we cannot synchronize the whole database every two or three seconds. Why? Because we are not sure that the ERP can duplicate itself to our intermediate tables so often. And as <coughs> the reality showed, it can't. End up doing support for the ERP solution. Do you know what, wh what's happening when something is not working and it's not your fault? The customer is going to call you because you are the one with whom he's speaking and you are the one who said to him we're going to integrate it to the things to do the job for you. So we had to call them back and ask them why are these things are not working as they're supposed to, hear their solution, try to wait for them to implement it and then implement our bug fix uh, as, a, as an aftermath of, of their solution. Solution is not infrastructure agnostic. Okay, so let's say that our database in WooCommerce is MySQL and the ERP's database is MSSQL. Although this is not a bad thing, it shouldn't be a bad thing, still we have to take information directly from our database and migrate it to another infrastructure and as the experience showed, this could lead to strange things, especially when we're talking about Greek text. Uh, cron job orchestration needed. So what we ended up doing in this solution is uh, micromanagement the cron jobs, and I mean literally, there was a person that was micromanaging them, in order to find the optimal solution with the little time possible to integrate the two things. And we ended up doing something which is not very good in, devel in development in general, uh, to try and guess what's the best thing to sync in which time. So we moved on with the second uh, integration after a while in for another client, of course, uh, which had an API. And things went well. So, um, of course, not everything was sold from us uh, magically, but it was pretty easier because now we could uh, request something from the ERP and we were getting something that we could read or try at least to read. So, if we wanted to update the previous diagram, we have this one where things are pretty easier. We have the ERP on the left, we have WooCommerce on the right, and we just need those two things to talk over an API. Okay. Uh, pros and cons. What's not working for a, a solution that doesn't provide an API is a pro for a solution that provides an API. I'm not going to tell them again because you can get the picture. So getting to the bottom of that, uh, I'd like to, to share with you some thoughts about why we had to take this long journey to end up implementing two different, two different solutions with WooCommerce. Uh, at least why I think we, we had to go there. First of all, uh, we we found out that, let me start again. Can anybody of you imagine a reason why the first solution didn't have an API? Were they just bad coders or there's something else? Ideas?
custom made. Okay, both of both of them are 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 good answers. Of course, the second is more near to the reality, but there's another reason. Yes. Exactly. The thing is that what we got was legacy code. It was legacy code. This, uh, this implementation was built a lot many years ago when there weren't eShops in the Greek market and there wasn't a need for Greek eShops in the market. So nobody could uh, see the need to create an API since all the jobs that the ERP had to do was internally to the shop itself, to the ERP solution itself. So when at some point somebody said, okay, I need the data to integrate them with another solution, there was no bridge for that. And the only thing that they could do is either allow us to use a solution like the one I showed you, or, which would be even worse, let me hit their uh, database directly. And I'm saying that because it's the solution that another ERP gave us when we discussed with them. It's okay, we can give you access to our database and do a request directly to it. So uh, in order for us as a, as a software house to design quality code, this taught us a lesson. And the lesson is uh, be aware who is going to use your code in the future. If it's gonna be uh, infrastructure for your company, you could not use an API, although I personally think that an API never hurt anyone. If, and you can do it either open source, for example, extending WooCommerce or WordPress if you, if you have to. It could be inner source. How many of you know the, the term inner source? Okay, inner source is, is a new thing that's stepping between open and closed source and it is parts of, of, the, of the code, which could be closed or open, are open to, the, to an organization or a community, but not outside that. So, what's what the pros and the cons of using a legacy code versus uh, a legacy code dependent system? So, first of all, it has a great effect on the documentation. The fact that the first solution had no API was accompanied by the fact that when we tried to, in to integrate, there, was, there wasn't a, a structured documentation to tell us how to do that. Instead, we were continuously on the phone with the tech support of the ERP solution, telling them ideas that we had and responding, and they were responding to us with their ideas. And at some point we found some common ground to be able to work. There is uh, no clear new features roadmap. So if, for example, I want a new feature to extend my WooCommerce solution for my client and it has to be connected with ERP, if I call them and, sell and tell the ERP uh, tech support, can I do that? They, they're going to tell me, um, let us think about it and we'll announce it to the next release of, of our update. Backfix roadmap. I'm sending something that doesn't work as I want, or even worse, it's working, but it could be way faster if we, we have implemented it in a different way. They cannot tell me when this is going to be ready. And integration adaptability. Because I don't have control over the software I'm trying to integrate my solution with, I cannot make it make the right extensions to update it to do so. And third, the fact that those solutions were, were in total, I mean all the ERPs that we're talking are proprietary software. 
So when you have to deal with proprietary software, I don't, I'm not, I'm not very fanatic about open source, and meaning that every closed source solution is the devil and we should kill the one that's maintaining it. But it should at least provide us with a way of being able to get the data without interfering with the business logic behind the ERP solution and do whatever we want with them. Proprietary solutions usually, if they don't have an API, they don't allow you to do that because once you're in their system, you can do stuff. And this is getting messy at some point. Also, there are all the other things that we said. Code is a black box. We cannot, I know that it doesn't work, but I can find out why. Support is paid and on demand. So if I want to fix from our client, my client have to have usually to pay them to make this fix and they might return a cost to him that he cannot afford. So this gives me a hard way of uh, making my solution better. There's no community, so I couldn't ask, for example, on Stack Overflow or a, a WordPress forum, uh, I have this problem, can you help me with that? But I had to call someone and, and he would say to me, uh, let me check and I'll get back to you in a month. And uh, contract precinct integration. So if I want to promise new features to my clients, I have to also give them price for that. And the price is going to be dependent on the price of the people behind the ERP solution. Okay, this might not be uh, known to, <laughs> to the non-Greek <laughs> people here, but I see people already laughing, so I guess you found out. So there's a bit more in my presentation, and I have five minutes left, so I, I guess it's going to be okay. So when I proposed the, the presentation, it was, also all, it was only two integrations, but from that time to now, there's a third one that we're trying to do, and it's worse than the other two. <laughs> So, say oh if you are sympathizing with me. <laughs> okay, so our new challenge is this. We have two databases and we need to sync them through Excel files. If you want to try it with us, find me outside and pitch me your idea. I'd be glad to implement it. Thank you very much. I guess questions. Thank you. By the way, three persons of this picture, one is me, are in the space. You can find them and ask them cool things. Yes. Um, question: Why would you integrate between two dat databases using Excel files? Can't you use something like CSV or JSON or something more humane? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but the client came and said, "We have this ERP solution, and we need to integrate our WooCommerce store with this." And I said, "Okay, I'll call them and ask them how we're going to do that." And the guy told me that, "Yeah." We're going to give you Excel templates. You're going to fill them for us, and then we will update the database with them. And it was the only way, so I guess I have to do it. <laughs> or not take the job. It's, it's up to us. But the thing is, and I, I think let's, let's uh, use the question to elaborate some more. The thing is that because the, uh, the ERP solutions that are uh, are on market at this time that we're talking, uh, were designed in different periods of time and with different needs and characteristics in mind. And therefore, there is no common ground in terms of, of, of development st structure integration. And that's why some people are using uh, me mediation tables and databases. Other people are using still the file system. 
and others have moved on and uh, are turning to APIs. The great thing that happened was that the first solution um, reported that within the first quarter of 2018, they're building an API. But you can only imagine what that means for us. We have to rebuild the whole system to work with an API now. If he understands that, he needs to pay for the second integration. It, this is always a tricky one for the sales, <laughs> but we'll try. Another question, maybe? It's coffee break, so do one, or two, or four, or five. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, what methodology you are using to sync your MySQL to SQL, or SQL to MySQL? You mean uh, from MySQL to SQL Server? Yeah, which to, to one you tried? Which one uh, you're using? To, to integrate, just so to be, to be sure that I understood the, the question correctly. You mean what methodology we use to sync two different types of databases, yes. one with the other? Yes. Okay. Uh, because the, uh, the, the problem is not the, are not the databases to start with. It's the fact that the data should pass from the one database to tables with the exact structure of the first database and then to the other. So whatever solution I do, I have to recreate the tables to my environment. Let's say this is MySQL or could be anything else and copy the data and the fields from the first database and then I can read the data. So the methodology at least in my mind, until today we're speaking, doesn't matter, unless you have a good suggestion about it. Yeah, I, I done need by using the MySQL drivers on SQL server. Okay. Uh, I was asking if you have something different. Uh, no, no, we, we also pass the information from the mediation tables from one infrastructure to the other, and then we updated the other system. We couldn't find a smarter way to do it. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, have you ever done uh, ERP integration when you need to manage uh, a data, two-way data handling? Uh, like, for example, if a uh, client has client has uh, like uh, products in their ERP systems and they want to transfer it to the e-commerce that is okay that is one way but if they just want uh, but if they also want to like enter products in uh, their uh, WooCommerce or e-commerce system that should also be uh, visible in ERP or transfer to ERP how do you handle that or did you uh, ever work on that thanks uh, the question is uh, if it was a bi-directional thing yeah, yeah. and something more or just that? No, no, just that. Yeah, we, we implemented the thing uh, two-way. So, um, okay, in the API in the API scenario, I guess it's it's pretty much it's clear. So let's go to hmm, fast rewind. So. So. Uh, as you see, whoa. Let's have it for our great sponsors. Okay, so back to back from the small intermission. We have uh, two way arrows, so we implement it both ways. Um, and want to know how or uh, it, it's it's really simple because. Okay, uh, is this a pointer? Simple, okay. So what you're doing is, whatever database this is, you, you choose the tables that you're interested for, let's say clients, orders, and products. You make a copy with the, ad the identical structure of the, of the original database. Okay, and this is in, in the same uh, DBMS as the database itself. So if this is my MS SQL, this is MS SQL as well. Then you, you create a, a code that synchronizes those intermediate tables 
with those intermediate tables that they are in the DBMS that your ESOP has, for in our case, WooCommerce. The reason you need those tables is that you can't use the ones that you have in the WooCommerce itself because they need to be identical to those in order for the two, for the two intermediate data, data tables to clone the data from the other. Uh, and this is happening because the uh, specific ERP solution doesn't let you to read from there. It needs to write the data on your side. So that's why we needed the two sets of the intermediate tables. Other questions? Yes? Uh, hi. If you have like a, a, a task to do an integration with a two legacy system, let's say, can you just export the, the data out uh, with your own way, like JSON, XML, and whatever, and uh, just assign this task to the legacy system owner, which is like the mo most appropriate person for, uh, for this job? So what you're saying is I uh, built the template on how I want the data to come to me, and then I tell them fix it. Uh, not in that manner. Okay. Uh, like uh, export the data, uh, say this is uh, the WooCommerce API, this is the way that you can uh, retrieve the data, this is the way that you can interact with the data, and it's too expensive for us to walk with the legacy system and uh, spend uh, hours on the phone and uh, oh. email. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna say that uh, we hear you. It's going to happen like third quarter of next year. And in the meantime, your customer says, okay, I maybe some other time <laughs> or something yeah. like that. So, but uh, the usual case is that those ERP systems, because they are, exactly because they are legacy systems, they have found a way, not a good one, but they have found a way to provide you with the data. And they say to you, you're going to charge for the integration. Charge whatever you, charge whatever you must and do it this way. Otherwise, we'll have to do it and we are going to charge your client eventually. So it's more or less the same thing in the end, the same money uh, going to be paid. Yes. Hello. Uh, Hello. Can you explain in short the business decision to take uh, the first uh, job? Uh, I mean, you realize that it is, uh, it's going to be hard work mm -hmm. to do it, but uh, maybe you thought that uh, you can use this uh, solution again and again with uh, this kind of ERP. Was it uh, based on that or was it something else? Excellent question and I promise I didn't pay him to do it. <laughs> so uh, what we're trying to do in Social Mind is we're trying to create, uh, a, as we call it, a 360 degree of services uh, around digital marketing. And a part of digital marketing is selling online. Because we have a strong background in programming and using WordPress and WooCommerce, as I said earlier, we thought that it would be good to be able to automate the process of syncing the storage, the physical storage of a shop with the, their online systems in order uh, for them not to have to pay someone to actually do a duplicate job entering orders both in the shop and the ERP or vice versa. So the main reason was that and is, still is, that we're trying to uh, provide um, a component or on our infrastructure that a user in the future could choose their ERP and have a, okay, may maybe not the perfect, but a very good solution on syncing their products. But uh, after the experience with the first solution, we think that the quality of the integration in the first case and the case there which there is an API, are definitely very, uh, have a very great distance between them in terms of quality and performance and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, thank you. There are, I see uh, at least five, so I'm here, I'm available. Um, which one? It's me. Oh. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks a lot for your presentation. Um, Thank you. I just have a question um, about um, future implementations. 
supposedly that first of all I, I am aware of all the problems and restrictions of dealing with ERP technicians and stuff so I can relate with you guys let's have a beer afterwards yeah <laughs> and cry over it yeah uh, <laughs> I just want to say in the future like if if uh, supposedly we, we had um, full um, liberty to implement our uh, connections uh, in your professional opinion and experience, would you say that uh, a connection uh, would be better to be reactive or, you know, uh, to be able to accept um, connections and deal with stuff internally? Or it should it be reactive, like sending information uh, to the ERP and let the ERP handle it? I mean, if you could do it in all uh, in all in one solution. Well, uh, you're trying to generalize, and it's a very good thing. We yeah. try to do it as well. If we don't have an API available, um, we have to do something specific to the solutions that they don't have. One idea is to uh, tailor-made every solution. Another idea is to persuade them, like we did with our first case, to turn the thing around to an API. The third idea that I thought about but I don't think it's viable is to persuade them to pay me to make their API f the API for them. <laughs> okay. If you know someone with an ERP that wants an API, let me know. Uh, okay. there's, another, there's another technology out there, but uh, we're just looking at it at this time, which is called uh, the Enterprise Service Bus. Which of you have heard about it? Yeah. This technology I is something says something different. We have systems all around, and we are using a central bus of messages that those systems are willingly giving. And then there is, there is a, a main component that reads the messages and decides which of them need to be uh, scheduled and uh, interacted with. But this also has the problem that we don't know every solution out there, the infrastructure behind it. So we can't be sure that this is going to generally, uh, to in general solve the problem. We're, we're looking for it, but we're not there. I guess this is the short answer. Yes? Hi. Hello. Thanks for the information and presentation. I would like to ask what happens when you have uh, more than one languages on the website or in the, or in the ESOP, let's say Greek and English. Can you uh, say it one more time? Because I lost something. What happens when you have more than one languages on the website, let's say Greek and English, and how? Ah, okay. So uh, what's happening is that, uh, in general, the ERPs are, are keeping the information uh, uniquely. So the, the, the multilingual thing is going to happen in the eShop. The ERP doesn't have a need to have multiple languages unless the, they have implemented some SEO features, for example, for uh, the descriptions or the titles of the products. But in our opinion, uh, this is handling one way. I mean, we are getting all the data from the ERP, and then we can replicate to our site, to the ESOP site, and deal with the, with the multilingual content. Or we can map the the version, the language that exists in the, in the ERP site, let's say it's the Greek one, with the translation that is offered in our WooCommerce solution. Let's say if we're using the WPML package, this could be the, the translations of a specific product or of a specific feature of the product. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. You can make them so. Uh, but you will, I'm afraid. <laughs> Yeah, wh wh where are you? Okay. Where am I looking? Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, how do you manage to, to make a proper cost estimate? Uh, meaning that you're, you're dealing with an ERP, with a, with, a, with a closed system, with a black box, that to, you don't know exactly how it works. So how do you manage to, to, to give a proper quote to your client? Uh, Okay, this is this is always tricky one, but it's not only with with integration within ERP. It's generally when, as Mariana was saying in the previous presentation, when somebody comes and 
ask you to do um, a tailor-made solution or an extension of the WooCommerce uh, that doesn't exist out there as a uh, component out of the shelf or something. Um, it's difficult, but what we try to do when we're dealing with this kind of questions, we're trying to we're trying to uh, establish a basic set of features that we think they're they're solving the problem. Put a price on them as if we were going to build them on our own, starting from scratch, for example, and then uh, based on the information that the vendor gives us. For example, I have an API and it is accompanied with the documentation. Or I don't have an API, but I'm gonna, uh, you're gonna tell me what you need and I'm gonna give them to you in a JSON format, for example, like uh, another uh, friend proposed. Uh, based on their answer on, on how we're going to get our data and how easy it is going, this is going to be, we try to put a price on that. The truth is that in the end, when you are exploring un unknown uh, territories, you're us you usually uh, sacrifice a fraction of your price in order to gain the knowledge that you afterwards have to support better this solution. It's a risk, it's like buying bitcoins five years ago. That's it, something like that. Do it, do it. Uh, hi. Multi-currency, yes. Haven't dealt with, haven't dealt with that yet. We're still uh, supporting Greek customers. Only Bitcoins, nothing else. <laughs> uh, hi, up here, straightforward. Uh, so uh, I can see you, yeah, but yeah. I feel raising you. Raising hands, raising hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, first hi. of all, c congrats on your uh, presentation and uh, my hats off with your uh, patience with all these uh, legacy code. Thank you. Um, Let's have a beer. Two beers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> small question related to the previous one. Okay. Uh, when you deal with uh, legacy ERP systems and you have the client in front of you that says that I have an old one and I want you to connect it with my shop, um, do you propose him to uh, make some alterations to the ERP or even change it or upgrade it? before you take the job or you just say yes and move on uh, to the to walk on the mountain with a cross on your back and do the job yourself uh very good question uh we try when we we started this thing our intention was to to found to find a good vendor with an european stick with them and for example sell their solution as part of our package but what's, what happened on the way is that it turns out that when, when, s when, a, when a, a company uses an ERP system, the amount of money and time they spend to set up the whole storage and orders and everything to uh, support this ERP is a cost they cannot pay again. So uh, saying them that you need to come to this ERP in order for you to have an integration with your WooCommerce um, uh, eShop, uh, immediately is uh, adding to them a cost that they have first of all already paid once. And also they're going to delay their uh, eShop creation and therefore they're losing money. Uh, now, if the, if the customer is already in, in another type of uh, in a shop, let's say, for example, open cart or something else, and he's changing that, if you ask him to change the ERP as well, I don't think it, this is going to end well for either one of us. So I guess we need to, to make integrations per request if we want to solve the problem horizontally. And I think this is my cue. Thanks again for everything. Let's talk outside.